was laughing at the comments. <laughs> Guys, this Here. was not planned. <laughs> we are both drinking coffee. It's fine. It's fine. Hello, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> How are you guys? Oh, this is going to be a wild time, Julie. I'm just in shock over what everything that has gone on and these poor participants in Transact Card and Finmore and now this weird thing called Nilo Life. Like, it's just nuts. It <clears throat> is. We have so much to talk about first i think we should probably talk about the obvious and the hi, hi newness we should talk about um the instagram situation sure but first before we do let me run a quick disclaimer just just because you know we'll be right back Now, I feel like we should introduce ourselves. Julie, do you want to go first? Sure. My name is Julie Anderson. So I was in multi-level marketing for five years. I was in Mon 8, and I was also simultaneously in that coaching cult called Rank Makers. I'm pretty vocal speaking out against multi-level marketing. And I met Aaron. Aaron was actually the second anti-MLM creator that I ever communicated with when I left. And I can't even tell you how much she's helped me out over the past few years. So um, she helped me out through some real rough spots. I was I was alone and um, she helped me through even when I was deprogramming and just these like the prickly leftovers from being in a commercial cult where it's still like this residual like black and white. This person is right. This person is wrong. And I know there were times where I was being, you know, I, I'm saying prickly, but I was probably being pretty weird. And she just, no. she just held space. You held space for me. So thank you so much. Mm, I'm really happy to be here with your audience. That's so nice. Thank you. God, I was not <laughs> ready for all of that. Also, guys, we are streaming on both channels. So my channel and also Julie Anderson's. If you have not already subscribed to her channel, please go do so. Make sure that you like the stream on her channel as well. And Julie, thank you for that. That's that's amazing, and that's quite the compliment. So if you're brand new to my channel, my name is Erin Bees. I'm a wife, a mom, a military veteran, studying to become a certified personal trainer. That's coming soon. And I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing. I healed my way out, and now I'm using all of my social media platforms, including Instagram. <laughs> including Instagram, thanks to you guys, um, to expose the tactics that MLMers and people in them use. So where should we start with the, the Instagram story? Okay. Just so people can, because I, I know that there's been some things that you and I have talked about that we learned out of all of this, and I think we should maybe share some of that. Sure. I think um, what maybe uh, your community might want to know is that Kalika Kanitkar still doesn't have her Instagram account back. So if you could, if you'd be willing to do the same reporting procedure that um, if you were so gracious enough to do it for myself and for Erin, but she doesn't have her Instagram account back and she was the first person to lose her Instagram account and she has ties to this whole transact card thing. Her, her account was the first to go and uh, she let me know. I think I can't even remember. It all happened in like in a very short period of time, like the last week, week and a half. And um, she let me know. So then I made a piece of content right away on Instagram. And I said, you know, when you join a multi-level marketing company, did you think that you were going, going to be signing up to be mass reporting an account to get taken down? Little did I know that the next day my account was going to go down. But I had a blue tick mark. <clears throat> I paid for the meta verified subscription. They sent me two digits, two six digit codes, one's one to my phone and one to my email. That was the appeal process. That was it. So I did that. And almost like within 10, 15 minutes, my account was reinstated and I thought I was off. It was the next day my account went down. And then I think it was the following day your account went down. I think it was that same day. Same day. Cause it was Sunday. And I remember in, in, 
a group chat that I'm a part of, somebody said, oh my God, Julie Anderson's account has been taken down on Instagram. I was like, what? That's weird. And I remember thinking, that's really weird. And then later that day, mine was taken down. I got this random email from Instagram that I thought was a spam email, like, oh, we've locked you out of your account or whatever. But it said that I was suspended. My account was suspended. And so it asked me to log in. So I, I tried logging in. Lord, help me with remembering passwords. <laughs> so I, I log in and it was like instant disabled. My account was instantly disabled. And I was like, what? And I remember it took me some time to kind of process what was happening because I, I just didn't understand. And in this process, uh, definitely had some help from people that work at Meta. So my biggest piece of advice that I can give anybody um, with respecting this these individuals' privacy is if you are a content creator and you are putting out content about multi-level marketing companies, pyramid schemes, all of those things, my suggestion to you if you are ever faced with this is to see if you can find somebody that works at Meta that can help you kind of from the inside because um, that was really, really helpful. That was where I learned about the um, getting verified. And I remember we talked about this a long time ago and we were joking about it, about being verified because we've seen so many people in multi-level marketing companies pay just to get verified. But what I didn't understand is when you are verified and you're paying for that service is essentially what it is. I don't care what it looks like, but the the, most frustrating part for me was there was no way to contact Instagram in this scenario. And I have a, a decent following on Instagram. I've worked for many years. And so when you are paying for that feature, you have access to, to a different kind of customer support. There's people that you can speak to, other humans that you'll be able to speak to. So in case you noticed that today, <laughs> That is why my account is verified so that in the event that somebody else tries to mass report me for impersonating anybody else, I'm already verified. They've are Instagram, AKA meta has already verified. I am who I am. So that won't work. So that's what I've learned out of all of that. I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to that, Julie. Um, yeah, because my account was verified the same thing, but I still lost it. And I didn't have access to any special number. Like I was hooped. And today I tried, so well, weird. not today, yesterday, I tried to like get verified again and I'm on a waiting list. That's what the That's message so I got. I, I sent a screenshot to Aaron. I'm like, there's a wait list. We'll let you know if you, when, you know, you can apply or whatever. So I thought, oh, well, whatever. So yeah. that's the only thing I had to add. Maybe I can send a message in and, and ask some questions about that. And then I'll, I'll get back to you if I hear anything. Maybe we have, you're the inside person now. <laughs> I think that's so funny. I don't know. Anyways, we, first of all, huge thank you to you guys. I know Julie feels the same way. Huge thank you to the anti MLM movement. Huge thank you to all of the other creators that were doing lives and, and posting in their stories. We appreciate everybody. This, I feel like this was a big win for the movement. I mean, I know. Like I said on one of my other streams, it's it's just social media, but it was the principle of it and the fact that what they were claiming we were doing obviously is not true. And so I just feel like this is a big win for the movement and the power of the movement working together to right a wrong, you know? Not that not not that, that was our wrong to right, but like, hey, this is wrong, you know? So yeah. Um, and Kalika, I have included in my Instagram stories how, like step by step, how you can um, report to Meta that, hey, this is the same thing that you guys did for our accounts. I've included that in my stories, both on Instagram and on Facebook. So you can check that out. And um, I, I know Julie has that in her stories as well. So keep reporting, keep reporting, keep reporting, and let's get her her original account back because at the end of the day content creation is work it's it's and, time invested yeah and these have been uh i made a tiktok today and it was ugh, that rhymes and that's so stupid but it's like these little <laughs> oases out there on social on social media for people that are leaving multi-level marketing companies 
to find each other and to leave comments safely without being harassed or recruited. Or if there is, you know, are those, those comments are allowed to stand, it's on anti-MLM content. So there's some level of protection. So when our accounts shut down, regardless of how many followers, you know, a person has, those communities, those voices were also removed. And Kalika was really you know, she has helped a lot of people. She has a lot of experience um, with World Ventures and World Ventures as a heavy hand in current Transact card Finmore. So I know she was pissing a lot of people off. And it shows when you think, um, how big of an account do you need to be to be taken down? When you look at, like I had just over 3,000, you think it, it really, the influence, it's, we're, we're far more influential than multi-level marketing would have you believe. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, absolutely agree. And speaking of pissing people off, we're very much diving into Gen X territory tonight. First of all, we are both Gen X and we were both Torians. I don't know if y'all know that, but Julie and I know that. So yeah. that's that's the vibe tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try to rein in because I can get pretty rowdy. So I'm going to be respecting your uh, calm. No, I love vibe. it. Get rowdy. It's fine. Y'all <laughs> Y'all want her to get rowdy. Come on, be real. <laughs> I know you guys do. All right. So we there's a couple different things that we can do. I've got three different videos that Julie and I have prepared. The first one is, oh, I don't know. Do you want to you want to talk about Randy? Randy, I hope Randy, you're watching. Randy Schroeder has been in multi-level marketing, what they like to call the industry, but it's not an industry because it's more like a cartel. He's been in it for decades. He's got his start, I believe, in Monavi, and then he moved on to Canaway, which I believe he still holds a position there, according to his LinkedIn the last time oh. I looked anyway. And then he got into Transact Card, which then changed into Finmore. And now he's flown over to the new multi-level marketing called Nilo Life, which has that funny, weird little arrow like Finmore did. It's just going, instead of like swooping up like this, it's kind of going like this. It's not an accent <laughs> and it's not an umlaut. It's a little arrow. <laughs> Randy Schroeder likes to stand with his crotch right in front of the video camera too. He did a two and a half hour presentation recently. And I'm not exaggerating. It was an uncomfortable few seconds where he was like getting the presentation ready and he was standing right up close. You could, it was horrifying. So for somebody who has uh, claimed to made mil million, tens of millions of dollars in network marketing, you know, the contradictions is just so gross. So that's like, that's what I know about Randy Schroeder. <laughs> Randy Schroeder. We hope you're watching, Randy. Or your people. We hope your people are watching. Hello. <laughs> so we started planning this live stream and what we wanted to cover. I haven't talked about Randy Schroeder on my, uh, my account. So I definitely wanted to talk about that because he is involved with the new company that Julie just said that I called Neo Life in my stories yesterday. It's fine. I was very amped up after a successful win, thanks to you guys. And um, yeah, so I start, where do you go when you start to research something? You go to Facebook because that's where they're all at. That's and when I say them, I mean MLMers. So I go to his Facebook and I'm like, when was the last time he talked about Transact? And it was February 24th. So here we are, what is today, the 18th? And I think he put this out, this was February 24th. So we're about three weeks ago, he did a presentation on Transact. So what I was thinking, if you guys are cool with it, is maybe we can watch some of that and kind of decipher or translate, if you will, some of the cult kind of language and then we can compare to another thing that he's doing where he's talking about what is it called nilo life ne what is it yeah nilo life. nilo nilo life it's so it's like monate nobody knows how to pronounce it was like monat Mon they can never get their names right <laughs> it's ridiculous also did you know allegedly the nilo is for the initials the n-e-l is initials of the people that have started it so it's nick eric and larry Nick Sorensen, Eric Allen, and Larry Lane. That's right. Oh, unholy I don't know what Trinity. Is. What's that? <laughs> the Holy Trinity of scammers. <laughs> it's that no, 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 not at the body shop. Da, 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 doing something unholy. <laughs> Nilo. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, we are going to laugh a whole lot today. So I hope you're in for that. So, okay. 
let's watch this first video. And this is what Randy put out on, put out, sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, what is this doing? Hang on a second. This is what he put out on the 24th of February. And he's talking about Transact. And this is a business presentation. We're not going to watch the whole thing. I'll tell you guys that right now because it's like an hour and a half. And there's other things that that I, I know we want to talk about. We also have, what is the pickleball champion of the world's name? What is his name? Scott Kufus. I, I think Scott. that's how it might be Kufus. Kuf, Kufus. I'm saying Kufus. I might be mispronouncing it. If it is Kufus, because that rhymes with Doofus. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. I could be, that could be my me spreading misinformation again. <laughs> Got it. Love it. Um, let me put this here. Hang on one second. Anyways, Scott, apparently he owns a toilet paper MLM. I was not aware. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let me share my tab here. The sound is terrible. So just FYI. Yeah, let me see if I can get this. Here we go. <laughs> the comments about <laughs> <toilet paper. laughs> sounds like a dirty business oh my god <laughs> all right let's see we probably want to do this oh i love this this is randy schroeder everybody all right let's uh let's give this a whirl i apologize for his sound but it is what it is we're gonna listen to it we're we're listening for cult language cult like language and the reason that i kind of wanted to do it this way is because i want to see if there's any similarities between what he is saying here representing transact and what he's about to say in nilo life and then you know we'll go from there so leave your commentary if you haven't already liked the streams on both of our channels and subscribed you know check it out what do you got there in cyberspace if the uh, sound doesn't work right i apologize there won't be a darn thing i can do about it in between <laughs> Get a mic, Randy. Get a get a lapel mic. Just right here. That's it. You can get it on Amazon. Let me know if you need a link. <laughs> sometimes it tends to work and sometimes it does not. Um, I'm kind of granting you access here to be a fly on the wall. The truth is that right now my conversation is for you two guys. My conversation is for you two guys. And if somebody else gets something out of it, that is fantastic. Awesome. And by the way, every single thing. Awesome. Uh, he's saying that because those are probably the only two guys in the room. <laughs> yeah, <that's great. laughs> I'm trying to recruit you guys. So this presentation is for you two. But I'm going to go live and try and recruit anybody that I can is essentially what he's saying, I think. Yeah. And he's got this weird forced uh, joviality. I, I've just seen a few pieces of content with him in it. And it's it's fake. Like this is his act. He has this it's like if you saw his eyes, I think they would be dead eyes. It's this shtick. He's he's like, you know, he does this nodding thing. It's really creepy. He sometimes mm. sticks out his tongue too. And that is just foul. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's uncomfortable. People are having a hard time listening to it. Hmm. It's really quiet. Okay. Well, oh, and he does have a lapel mic. My apologies. I didn't see that. <laughs> probably didn't turn it on <laughs> is the mic on randy i can't <laughs> oh here's got the mic yeah, with your z bucks not. randy <laughs> <laughs> all right well i don't think we're gonna be able to listen to this because the sound is oh i don't know what we're doing hold on plan b plan b we're just gonna go you know how we roll we're just gonna go into um the Nilo first video. Let's try that. Sorry, guys. Plan B. Um, I thought that I edited the sound, but for some reason, I'm not seeing it on that video we were just going to watch. So I apologize. Maybe we can revisit that another time, but that's my bad. All right. Let's see what uh, Randy has for us pitching Nilo life. This is from just a few days ago. Um, and pay attention to the language that he's using. I know we're talking about that a, a whole lot, but 
he almost makes it sound like he's the one that is starting this company and people are implying that and he's not correcting them but spoiler alert he is not somebody that started this company because his his initial is not in nilo uh he is just like what we would call a master distributor so one of the first founding distributors if you will um that's just trying to recruit everybody what do they sell good question i have watched this video i think you did too didn't you the 40 minute video i couldn't stomach it i was like i watched the I 11 it. minutes Scott and then I'm like I can't I saw him talking and he was doing this nodding thing and I'm like I'm gonna wait for you and okay I get it I get it I understand that uh in this basically what Nilo Life is they want to get away from supplements because I think what Randy says maybe using different words is supplements are so hard to get into other countries and so we want to stay away from that so they're basically going to do like a membership for travel it sounds like in addition to trading like a trading platform and or educational platform so they're kind of taking everything and combining it into one and charging people 55 dollars a month yeah so oh my god you guys are funny in the comments <laughs> So that's essentially what they sell. This is him pitching it. And it sounds like he's pitching it to a bunch of people that are in Transact, which is now Thinmore. So just, you know, pay attention to the language. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so the thing has grown based on a very, very low enrollment fee. It has grown based upon a very low monthly fee. It has grown based upon a simple discount package on a bunch of consumer goods that people use every day. And it has grown based upon a two by 16 forced matrix. Uh, the vast majority of you would have no idea what that even means. Um, but let me simply describe this fact to you. Um, so the fact is, Randy, if I may, that it's a pyramid scheme. And the matrix is, you know, it's interesting because paid per letter does this too in their uh their affiliate so when you recruit somebody they they fill it on the left side and then the next one on the right side and they fill it that that's what basically the matrix is that he's talking about um also matrix it's like another word for scam yeah indeed yeah oh god so rich in this particular building mechanism um i will have two legs Lucky. just two it's not a binary because we get paid on both of those two legs. So we all get paid on two legs. Okay? Um, I'm leaving on Wednesday and on Wednesday I'm going to Europe and I will go to Lisbon and I'll go to Prague and I'll go to um, Warsaw. Nick, if you want to see me, I'll come and see you wherever you are. And I'm going to Tel Aviv and I'm going to Dubai. And you know, when I go there, I'm going to be enrolling people. I'm going to be enrolling people that I've known for years. I'm going to be enrolling some of the best and the brightest and the strongest people that exist in the network marketing industry in Europe. And you know what? There are only going to be two people on my front line. That means the second one is going to be on somebody else's front line. They'll be placed in my group. The third he is so smug. Listen, it's so I'm, the, I'm yeah. the best. I, I'm going to be doing all this traveling. It's like, are you fleeing the country? Why are you visiting all these countries in such a short period of time? I wonder if that's going to raise any red flags for any of the people in Transact Card or Finmore that are trying to get their money back. And the best advice that I could give you is to contact your regional Department of Justice office and your state attorney general because your state attorney general office has an interest in representing their constituents. You can do that. You can send emails there and they're, they're going to move a lot quicker than the FTC. So Randy here, traveling all these places, name dropping Dubai, like this is supposed to be so exotic. Who are all these people that are just amazing? He's just going to fill up his matrix. He's going to make as much money as he can because Finmore is going. <laughs> and this is supposed to impress all these poor participants that are just tuning in like, oh, he's such this amazing traveler. He knows all these. Who are these legends in multi-level marketing? All the people that have already retired. I'm sure you heard this too, Aaron, when we were in multi-level marketing, they'd be like, they're coming out of retirement to join this incredible opportunity. It's like, that's what they do. Yeah. They're never out of retirement. They just join a new multi-level marketing company at the, its inception. They're at the top and then they move to the next one. This is so gross. And the amount of people that do that and hold a position in the previous company and never speak about it 
ever again, I think is so alarming. So they're not working the business. Like, you know, we, we've heard that, that phrase, you know, oh, so-and-so is still in the company, still on the team, but they're not working the business. You know, they're not doing the Zooms. They're not showing up to the events. They're not communicating with their team and they're collecting a check. So it's really interesting the dynamic of people in multi-level marketing. Uh, you know, it's okay as long as you're working the business, as long as you're showing up, you know, and doing the trainings and stuff, it's okay for you to collect that check off of your team. But if you're not working the business, oh, well, you shouldn't be collecting the check, which all of it is scammy, all of it. But then you have these people like Randy, who allegedly has positions in other companies and I, and is collecting some sort of a check. And when Julie and I were talking the other day, I said, well, the whole reason he's doing this is because he wants to recruit people and he's hoping that these people bring friends with them. <sighs> Yeah, actually, you know, you had made oh, that sorry. you'd made that excellent point. Um, and I'd never heard it phrased like this before, but it's just they're recruiting multi-level marketing participants who've already been recruited. They're just being re-recruited into yet another pyramid scheme. So it's, you know, I would heard the term um cult hopping, MLM hopping, you know, go yeah. from one to another, they think it's their fault. But I just really like the way you had said that. It's just they're just they're ripe for recruiting into another pyramid scheme because they really look up to him. They think he is, they, he calls himself like Mr. Transparency or the King of Transparency, or he uses this word. And then he does the opposite of being anything but transparent, but they follow him. They'll follow him into, they'll keep following him no matter where he goes. If he jumped off the cliff, they'd follow him over the cliff too. Unfortunately, it's devastating. Yeah, and, and as they're jumping off that cliff, which that's just an analogy. We don't mean that like literally. Yeah. Um, they're the ones that will come into the comments of our videos and defend him. The, the very person that is preying on these individuals financially so that he can travel to Dubai. So before any of you, not you guys that are watching this, but you guys know what I mean. Any of you that are in Transact, any of you that are considering joining Nilo Life, any of you that are Randy schroeder stands before you come into the comments ask yourself why you're doing it because i guarantee you if the roles were reversed randy would not be defending any of you because randy in my opinion is about himself just think about that before you hit enter just just because we will highlight it in our comments heck we may even make a whole video about it because that is very culty just heads up and and he would not be like encouraging you to go out and join another multi-level marketing company, but it's okay for him. It's okay for Eric Allen. It's okay for Larry Lane. It's okay for Nick Sorensen. And they can be claiming, which they are, that, but we're not disparaging the company. We're still in Finmore. And I don't even, Eric Allen wrote a post on his Facebook. I don't even want to be a, an owner of a multi-level marketing company. And then he's an owner of a multi-level marketing company, literally saying and doing opposite things. So yep. if you're in Finmore transact card and you're thinking that this person is such a leader, he's going, he owes it to you to lead you to into a scheme that is supposed to earn you more money than Finmore. I mean, he is leading you astray. He's not being honest with you. And I plea, I encourage you to critic, to critically think. Yeah. I was thinking about this earlier today because normally when you see top leaders, people at the top of the pyramid, let's say it that way, that go from one MLM to another MLM, that typically there's lawsuits that usually ensue from that. And that's not going to happen with this. Why? Because Eric Allen is starting Nilo Life and is still in Transact and was still very much a part of, I don't know if he's considered part of the C-suite in Transact, but is he going to sue himself? The rules don't apply to them because of that. It's interesting. It's going to be on somebody else's front line. I'm going to be placed in my group. In a forced matrix, Rich, the way that it works is Rich. every person that is enrolled is automatically placed. It is automatically placed. You don't need to determine where they're placed. And it just builds it out. First person you enroll goes on your left side, second one goes on your right side, the third one, the computer is going to put it on your left, and then it is going to default to wherever it needs to go thereafter, and it's just gradually going to fill in the bottom line all the way across. And so the real key is this, folks. Um, in a couple of weeks, in a very short period of time, the system is going to turn on. 
before the system turns on, um, we will have carefully selected the first handful of people who will occupy the first handful of spots. Why? Because there must be aggressive enrolling. It does Why? not do you any good. Why is Robin covering her iPad? Why is she? Yeah. Why is she... Robin, why are you doing that? Maybe maybe you're starting to like experience cognitive dissonance. Oh, Get so. out. Please leave. This your Run. instincts are right. This is a scam. Run. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Robin. Run. <laughs> oh, to be in a forced matrix if there's not a lot of enrolling going on. There's not a there's not a single business building mechanism in the direct selling industry that provokes a more rapid flow of new member applications than does this mechanism. And I can tell you the language. Yeah. The language just convoluted a more rapid flow of provoking the enrollment. Like he's talking about recruiting. There's no products here. It's just recruiting aggressive enrollment. Like I made this statement up when I was in grade five. It was like the Western economic diversification of the rational large intestine is equally proportional to that of the velocity of the small intestine, according to that of the pancreas. That's it. What he's doing right there. Convoluted doesn't mean anything. Just meant to impress. Well. <laughs> Okay. My favorite part is when they say, oh, it's not recruiting, it's team building. I'm not just trying to sign you up one time. I, I want you to continue. I want you to grow. I want you to grow your team. Yeah, because you make more money off of it, Randy. Uh, well, we'll we'll find out. Write it down. Mark down the date of this, March 15th at 626. Randy Schrader said on this Zoom that he believed the company would do 10,000 enrollments the first day. I do. I believe the company will have more than 50,000 participants in the company at the end of the first month. And because of the way that the system is structured, those people who get involved earlier get the benefit of those who get involved not quite as early. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's not illegal. It's a completely legitimate way of building a business. But Nick, what it does is it has a turbo charge. Why are you talking to Nick when Nick is one of the people that is starting Nilo Life? How he says people's name to try and make sure that he sees them so that he's validating them in a weird way makes me very uncomfortable. He almost sounds like the old Amway speeches. The way that he's delivering this, his tone, his, uh, you know, saying people's name to keep them involved in this Zoom where the majority of people don't even have their camera on is really uncomfortable to me. He has that rhythm down. It's so yeah. gross. And it's reminding me just of when I was in MLM because it's like that. It's familiar, even though it it was different what I experienced. But it's the same. It's the same stink. It's just a yeah different pungency or something. Ooh, it is definitely stinky. <laughs> mechanism to create a rapid flow of new member applications that doesn't have all the faults and flaws that a binary has, for example. And so it's a way to create income quickly. A fully built out matrix, and I don't have a whiteboard here right now, but a fully built out matrix. Has Please get the whiteboard out, Randy. Please, yeah. Please draw us a pyramid on your whiteboard like you are doing something that we have never seen before while telling us it is totally legal, it is totally legit, and it is not a pyramid scheme. Please also draw an, draw an S-curve for us. The, we're, we're about to hit momentum. And you know, it's got the X at the bottom of like, where it starts taking off. <laughs> this is where we are. Okay, Randy. You're going to quote the Forbes article. Forbes says that the best time to get in is when you're opening up in other countries and we're opening up in every country in the world. Yeah. Just so happens we're hiring. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> 131,000 people in it. Rich, if you have 131,000 people in your matrix, you're going to get paid $131,000 a month. It can't be less than that. There's also a matching bonus. Um, I've said as much as I need to say right now. I asked Nick to be here with me. And by the way, so you guys know, um, up until now, I have had this conversation individually. This is the first group conversation that I've had. I've had this conversation only individually. And I think I've had the conversation only with seven couples. Um, this decision, my my decision to do what I'm doing was made only. This exclusivity, you know, I've only, and he's the repetition. 
I've only had this uh, conversation individually. This is my first one. He's just unnecessarily repeating himself. This is what happens in MLM cults. And then the, this is so exclusive. This is my first one. So they're so honored. They're feeling like they're really part of something special. This is by design. Yeah. He's, he's wanting the people on this to go, Oh my God, sign me up, put me wherever I, I want in on this. It's, it's the high pressure sales tactic and it's manipulative. It's really gross. A couple of days ago, this is not a decision made a long time ago. This is a decision made a couple of days ago when it became evident to me that the company was not going to have that Finmore was not going to have debit cards in people's hands soon enough. For I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A couple of days ago, Randy, a company that was started last summer ish that by the way, Dustin Mansell was a part of with paid per letter. That should tell you everything that you need to hear, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, and nobody's had really any debit cards that I have seen, maybe the very, very beginning people, maybe, but just a couple days ago, you decided, oh, well, you know, people aren't going to get these debit cards in their hands quick enough. So I'm going to be the good guy here and tell you, hey, I'm, I'm going to save you. We're going over here. The sick part about it, and I talk about this all the time, is you have to understand what is the underlying motivation here. What is the underlying, let's let's use Julie and I as an example here. What is our motivation in talking about this? Well, we're trying to prevent people from being scammed by somebody like Randy. We're trying to prevent 70-year-olds that, I don't know if you want to share that, Julie, mm -hmm. that have talked about in the group that they're hoping that this is an answer for them. We're, we're wanting to get education out to prevent people from joining this. Randy's motivation is to make himself the most money until he moves on to the next scam. Yep. He's making false income claims. He's saying you can make money fast with this. He's literally describing a get rich quick scheme. He yeah. said this, uh, you could, if, if you have, notice this, if you have 131,000 people in your downline, who's going to have 131,000 people? You'll make $131,000 guaranteed a month. That's important because that's $1 for every person you have. How many pe what, people are going to recruit a handful of people? If they do, there's going to be like five people are going to get five bucks a month. Out of that $55, yeah. what you were mentioning, enrollment fee or each... Where's all that money going? Where's all the rest of it going? Exactly. And what's covered by that $55 a month membership? What is what is covered with the $20 distributor fee, whatever term they're calling their distributors? What does that cover? Because that's never really discussed. It's just like, hey, this is, you know, it's $55 a month and it's this, it's this, but it, there's never a breakdown of typically what those things are for. It's just, oh yeah, this is this is what it is but no specifics. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. You know, also, and this is, sorry, sorry. No, you're, I, I just remembered something with the, the dollar example. I remember being at Eric Worre's events and he would say, if you can help somebody, even if you can help them make a dollar, they're going to stick around longer. So that dollar example, for some reason is reminding me of some of those trainings from Eric's events where, Hey, just, you know, get them over the line. Even if you can help them make a dollar, they'll see that there's potential here. It's gross. It's so true because they just need to have any kind of evidence that it works, that therefore it's not a scam, you know? Oh, you know, I'm thinking too, like if you are watching this and it doesn't matter how old you are, a, a business presentation should be very clear. So say you were going to go into your bank and you're going to have a meeting and you're going to review your investments or your, whether you should buy some more like RRSPs if you're in Canada. You wouldn't be listening to somebody saying it's like, oh, well, I I did this and we're going to have aggressive enrollment and massive growth and I'm traveling. They would get to the point, they would be talking about you. Okay, this is how much you have. This is how much you have to pay. All of this is meant to confuse you. Yeah, I agree. And uh, any evidence it works will enable the sunk cost fallacy. Absolutely agree. Do you want to mention the comments? Um, oh. about the 70, 70 year old people sure. in that group that you saw. And we can talk yeah, about some of the screenshots from the group too. I think this would be a good place for that. Okay, great. There is this um, Nilo group that 
Randy Schroeder has made and it's public on Facebook and you can go check it out. I've, uh, I made a video on it and I've included the links in the description of that video. And there were two screenshots that I took. One was from someone that said, I'm almost 70. I thought that they were also said, they said, I'm almost 70 years old. I live paycheck to paycheck. And I, but I still want to like achieve something and people are welcoming mm. this person. In. And then there was a woman that posted, she says, I'm also over 70. So that was when I was like reading it. I'm like, oh, there's there. I mean, it's close enough, but I'm just trying to like, I'm not trying to mislead anybody with what the information I'm presenting. She, this person is over 70. And it's like, but I still have dreams. And I'm like, this is just revolting that you have people that are 70 years old or pretty darn close to it that are, are now putting money into this and have joined this group and they're getting defrauded. This is what's happening. This is a straight up pyramid scheme. And I'm so sorry if you're watching this from Transact Card and Finmore and you really, you know, you feel like you got benefit from this and you feel like you're following someone that is going to lead you into financial freedom. He does not explain the definition of a pyramid scheme. He just says it's not a pyramid scheme. He is, he is, what he is describing is a literal pyramid scheme. So him yeah. just saying, it's like you're sitting in a room full of like um, murderers and they're like, I'm not a murderer. And they're like, but you are, but because he said it, but everybody's sitting in there and they're just taking him at his word. You're not critically thinking you wouldn't do this for your grandchildren or your children. Please do it for yourself. This is absolutely getting off at the elderly, but it's like, there's so many elderly people that are getting targeted and scammed, you know, from guys yeah. like this. It's disgusting. Also, Ashley, thank you so much. Happy to see you both back on Instagram. Thank you. We appreciate you again. Thank you guys for all that you did shout out to the other creators that helped us as well and we still have work to be done for sure um there's still another account that we need to restore so please check out our stories um so that you can help as well so for me to accurately predict that people would be able to receive meaningful incomes sooner than fall meaningful. and i've just got too many people who don't have the staying power they can't make it till fall and so I they can't make it till fall but you sure have been collecting income on them in this entire time since last summer haven't you randy but now oh fall that's that's you know that's the straw that broke the camel's back here for him you know and now we're going to get into this new thing and you're gonna have to pay even more money but go off about people making a meaningful income randy because the majority of people that join you are not ever gonna see the money wasn't he wasn't he in rev card as well can you talk about his history like the companies that i think you did already right yeah, I don't know if he was in RevCard, but I, according to his link, somebody had just said that there was another company before Monavi, but I know Monavi, oh, Canaway, cool. Transact Card, Finmore, and there might have been other ones in there, but there we go. That's the. Interesting. And we were talking the other day, and I think you said that Ray Higdon, you think, was in Monavi, and that's where the grape, grapeity grape, whatever he says, that's what I think. comes from, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. And they were, and he was also in World Ventures. A lot of these people slithered yeah. out of that mess that was World Ventures. Yeah. You know who else allegedly has a position? I think it's World Ventures. I could be wrong. Um, and Milet. Uh, that's Isn't that it. crazy? It's like the scammiest, scummiest people. Are They're all connected. Ugh. I think it's World Ventures. Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, in the comments, but I think that's what it is. I know he has a position as a founding distributor in an MLM company. And I want to say it's World Ventures, but um, Christine, I run ads on my account. I do collect um, AdSense. So if you're watching on my account, that's why. I want you all to know this is not an indictment upon, this is not a negative comment upon anything that any other company is. This is an acknowledgement of the fact that I believed that I when I told people, when I told people just like you, Rich, back in June and July and August that you could be making money by the first of the year, I believed that was true. That's wound up not being true. My role as a leader is to create the income possibility for people who need it. Yes. The income possibility. But have you done that with people that have followed you from Monavi and whatever other companies in addition to Transact? Have people made significant or what he says, meaningful income? following you to these companies, because I bet they haven't. But now you're such a stand-up leader, Randy, that, hey, 
you guys, you deserve to be paid and fall is just too far away. So now we're going to join another company where I'm going to make even more money off of you guys and promise that you're going to make income and you're probably not going to. It's a wash, rinse, and repeat scam that he keeps running. And unfortunately, it's on some of the same people and some of those same people are bringing friends. And that's really sad. A oh, world financial group. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, Charlene. <clears throat> I hate this so much. So that's what I'm doing is this one should not take any um, judgment whatsoever about Finmore, good, bad, or indifferent. You've mm -hmm. all had your own experience. You make your, you make your judgment based upon your own experience. Um, what I want is a mechanism where people can begin to make money quickly. Um, I, you just heard me say what I believe. I believe that if a, if we don't have 10,000 enrollments the first day, I'll be shocked. We don't have 50,000 people in the company at the end of the first month. We will by the end of the second month. That means that I believe people are going to be making 80. You know, here's the thing. If he really were about people making a meaningful income, he wouldn't be talking about having 10,000 people in the company. He would say, I'd like to have a handful of people that are making $10,000. Pay attention to the language. He's talking about 10,000 people joining, 50,000 people, 100,000 people joining. It's, it's, it, it doesn't matter because these people are going to be paying $55 a month plus whatever commission he gets for them being in his downline. If he were really about helping people make income, it wouldn't be focused on 10,000 people joining where we know he's going to make the most money off of. It would be on, I'm going to help a couple people make $10,000. And that's just not the case. That doesn't happen in multi-level marketing unless you get in early at the top like Randy here is doing multiple times probably. And he's building the lore. This happens. This happened in Transact Card and Finmore too, where they're like, we had so many thousands of people. We're already going to have 100,000 people. And it happened with Mon8. This was part of the Meet Mon8 script that I would have. It would be, um, we projected our sales would be $1 million, but we surpassed them 25 times. We had $25 million in that first year. And so he's saying, I would be so surprised if we if we don't have 10,000 people enroll on the first day. Everybody's going to be pre-building these teams. These guys, he's flying to Dubai. As if that's supposed to be impressing people. This is a hallmark characteristic of a scam. He's This isn't impressive, but when you're in multi-level marketing, this is like numbers. Like, wow, all these people joining this means it's legitimate. And it's not. That kind of exaggerated claim it's a scam. Anything like this, he's even saying making money quickly. Scam, red flag, lots of Absolutely. red flags already. You know, and it also plays into, I don't know if this is considered a thought stopping cliche, but I know you're going to remember this phrase where when you're trying to recruit somebody in multi-level marketing and you're saying, if you're looking to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Oh God. Yeah. What he, <laughs> what he's saying is playing right into those people that are looking for their purpose, that are looking for community, that are looking to be a part of something. And it's unfortunate because just like he said, it's, it's really not about helping people make income. It's about the number of people joining so that he gets paid. It's just, I don't know, I'm having all of these weird correlations. Oh, that's why they say this. And that's why that was said. And it's, it's interesting to me, you know, so we're going to talk about it. $80,000 a month. There'll be some people make $80,000 per month in this thing. By the time we get to June, <laughs> that is going to happen. This By will probably June. be the fastest start of anything you've ever seen. Probably a faster start than what happened with transact card. Um, if transact card, a faster start than transact card, I wouldn't be using transact card no. as a, Hey, look, this is what we can do. Uh, that's not a good thing, Randy. That's a, oh, okay, so this is yet another scam that's going to fall on its face, but you're going to get paid. Cute. That's sarcasm, by the way, because I know there might be some new viewers. That's me being sarcastic. <laughs> God. I had not stubbed its toe in so many ways. I think there might be 500,000 participants by now. Hey, Karina. I believe that in the first year, there'd be more than a million participants in this company. All of that being said, Nick Sorensen, you are here with me. If you would please raise your hand so I can find you, then that would be great. And Just I'm going to turn this name, over to Randy. Nick and have Nick comment however he chooses. Whereabouts are you, Nick? Ah, there we go. So everybody, uh, let me let me just say, I met Nick many, many years ago. Oh. Here's where the edification starts, Yeah, which is not the actual definition of the word. This is just what MLMers use 
the word edification to to introduce the person that's getting ready to speak to make them sound like they are the second coming of christ literally how they <laughs> describe them. he can walk on water he can change water into wine he can feed the masses he can cure you of uh uh le leprosy <laughs> that's that's yeah just wait here we go um <laughs> the first experience that I had with Nick, and and, and you probably I know you'll remember this, Nick, but Nick came to see me as I described, and we went snowmobiling. And some of you know me. When things don't go the way that I want them to go, um, I would like to tell you that I'm patient. I'm not. Do you throw a big old tantrum, Randy? Because that's the vibe I'm getting. He does. He threw a temper tantrum and he drew about behind MLM, that website that publishes all that material, like exposing so many multi-level marketing companies. He drew behind MLM on his whiteboard and he made it look like a little train and a caterpillar. And then he wrote what? dirty laundry and he circled it. And he was like, he threw a tantrum on his video. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Yeah. I need you to send me that video so I can watch it because I, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's well, it's on B or I saw the screenshot of it um, on behind MLM. So I don't know where the oh. video is, but I was just when I was looking, I'm like, oh, how delightful is that? That's amazing. I would like I to that. look at that video, though. Yeah, I That'd would be a good like reaction to look at that. Clip. <laughs> yeah, Randy, send us the video, would you? If you're so <laughs> proud of it, just send it to Julie or myself or anybody that's part of the anti MLM movement. That'd be great. Dare you. Dare you. <laughs> I'd like to tell you that I'm kind. I'm not always, I want to be, Oh, but, um, we went snowmobiling and we came back and, um, driving some of you been to my home in Utah and nobody cares. I have a long one you know drive what? back to my oh, place and it was a day of hell. He's telling the story about Nick and all he's doing is talking about himself. <laughs> I said the and point how terrible of a human he is. It sounds like <laughs> I'm not nice and I throw tantrums, but you know what? Join me. I'm the leader. I'm helping you get out of transact. We're moving to this new thing. What is it? Ah, don't worry about it. It's $55 a month. God. <laughs> I cannot. This coffee. How's your coffee, by the way? It's good. I need to make another one. I downed it. I'm at the very end. It was very good. It's I like cold that. now. The last little bits of coffee, when it kind of cools off, I yeah. do enjoy it. Not better than the first sip. The first sip is always... Yeah, it's the best. best. I yeah. like it strong, too, where it makes me kind of like like that i yeah. like it stronger as i get older i don't know why it's like the oh. grossness with the pungent i like that word i for some reason i'm just using that word pungent. today <laughs> okay because we're listening to randy and what he's saying is, is quite pungent exactly. <laughs> heavy snow and it's an uphill trek and so i'm pulling a snowmobile trailer on these slick icy roads and we get up and um at the very spot where I would need to crest a hill to make a left turn into the next private lane into my driveway. Why is this There's important? a guy up there plowing the road and he's plowing the road dead in the middle of the road. And I couldn't oh, keep going. I had to stop. How dare him. And when I stop, now suddenly I'm sitting there on ice and it's a fairly steep hill. And so the truck starts sliding backwards and it slid backwards 75 yards or 100 yards and the trailer slides off into the snow. And then, and so I got out. And I Randy, I don't know who has told you over the years that you're a good storyteller, but you indeed are not. Not, I mean, not at all. It's quite embarrassing, actually. I went, started expressing my opinion to the guy driving the snowplow, and it wasn't producing a positive result. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so you were being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> there's like the snowplow driver has a story he's like there was an accident and then he had to like the it was removed and he was like plowing this other big berm of snow that was out of the way and then there was this douchebag that was like wanting him to move and he literally couldn't because he was doing his job like that's the other half of the story but randy is like i had to drive uphill both ways that day and then i had to stop and i had to wait i couldn't just like move out of my way don't you know who i am randy schroeder <laughs> I got an Randy. opportunity for you. And then I recruited him. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, what am I talking about? Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be introducing Nick. Randy, just say, Nick and I, I, I met him years ago. He's a fantastic recruiter. He's so positive and influential. And Nick, take it away. That's what you could do, Randy. I helped you out. Yeah. There's some free advice. If you could pay me yeah. 55 bucks, I'll, I'll take that money. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, Randy, it's not all about you. 
okay? It's not all about you. You probably have never heard that before, but I'm going to be the one to tell you that. <laughs> so the first interaction that I had with Nick beside the business is Nick came up and he diffused that situation. That's what happened. He came up and he diffused the situation. And the lack of accountability. I know I'm pausing this a lot, but the lack of accountability. He basically was saying that he was not being kind to the snowplow driver, which, by the way, that's a very important job. So people can drive on the roads. And the situation had to be diffused. Why is that, Randy? It's because of your own behavior. It's disgusting. And then to be basically do doing an opportunity video like this and to be saying, oh, well, I'm not always the nicest guy. And sometimes I throw tantrums. And uh, But by the way, Nick came in and saved the situation because I was being a total douchebag. Yeah. I was aggressive. Yikes. I couldn't control my emotions and I lost it on somebody who's probably the town snowplow, snowplow driver who's probably up all night because it had a big dump. And yeah. then, and, and then he diffused. It's like, why didn't you apologize? Why didn't you take accountability for your own actions and just say, Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Why did you even, why can't you control your emotions? Mm -hmm. Why are you so angry all the time? Angry Randy. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> see a therapist. Maybe he's got some Maybe issues. Talk to, to somebody. Out. Look at this poor old chap on the far right hand side. I keep looking at him. He's got his oh man, Jeffrey, his plaid please shirt. Jeffrey, don't join this. Oh, his name's Jeffrey. Jeffrey, please, Jeffrey, if you see this, please don't join this. Please, you don't. know better. You've been through a lot in your life. I can tell. This is. Just please don't join this. Don't do it. The fact is that guy wasn't going to help me get the trailer out. He wasn't. He and I were going to well, yell at each other for a little while, and then I was going to call AAA. That's what was going to happen. But instead, Nick went and he diffused the situation, and he wow. made a negative situation a positive situation. Wow. And uh, I don't know, Nick, if you realized when I was watching that, that I thought, you know what, this is a guy that I would like to be in business with, because it is not unusual for one to need. Because I can use his skills to diffuse a situation that I created because of my lack of emotional intelligence and being able to regulate my emotions as a grown man. That's why I wanted to recruit Nick. Nick, take it away. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> worst, worst intro ever. This is fantastic. Mm. Unbelievable. To diffuse the situation that I have caused because I move pretty fast and sometimes I'm misunderstood. At any rate, folks, I want you to know that I trust and respect and I really have come to admire Nick. This is a good guy. Uh, Nick, as you know, I've had individual conversations with a handful of people. Um, here we have 100 folks. This is my first foray outside of that first group. And I'm just going to turn it over to you to say what you think needs to be said. Well, awesome. I'm incredibly excited and uh, honored to be on here. Um, the first time I met Randy was, she's 22 years ago. I was at a business uh, opportunity meeting and uh, my uncle hey, invited me. Uncle was one of his leaders in another company. And uh, I was in college, uh, actually, so it was probably 25 years ago. Coming out of college was not the right time, but was definitely very impressed by everything Randy delivered. And so it's funny when uh, we walked into the, uh, you know, meeting for VP and above, you know, months and months ago and saw Randy there. And I'm like, wow, wait a second. Like I may be in the right room because that guy's in the right room. So definitely very honored to be on here, the zoom and share with you guys today. We are really excited about what, what we have moving forward. It doesn't mean that we're not excited about what we came from. It doesn't mean that we, uh, wish any ill will on them at all whatsoever. Uh, we hope that they're able to get everything done and get everything there and contributed. But we also, just like what Randy said, we have got to take a step and what we've got to, to the... um, uh, where'd he go? He's just gone. Stare off. <laughs> I fell asleep for a moment. His voice was droning on and all of a sudden he's gone. I don't know what's happening, but I hope all of these people that are on the screen that I, I hope y'all don't join. Uh, you know, move forward. And uh, we are excited about the, the path that we are moving forward. I know Randy talked about a lot of the products. Hey, there. Val and Gus. I don't need to hit on them a ton. Um, the travel piece right there, I've never done it before in this industry. But when I looked at some of the pricing, I got very excited about it. We have net net pricing, some of the best that we've seen. Our partners what that we have happening? have been in this space for <laughs> decades because of that and their strategic relationship. Hey, uh, Nick and Randy. Do y'all know how to operate Zoom? Also, my friend Charlene says, have they heard of presenter mode? Because then we're not scrolling just names and 
photos, we would actually be paying attention to the speaker. Randy, write that down. That's some feedback that I have for you for your next one. Okay. Just want to. They're not even trying. They don't even try anymore. Like they don't, it doesn't have to be professional. They just don't care. Look at someone's a Zoom user in there. Somebody has their phone number up on there. It's so bad. Oh my God. God. We're going to keep it moving. We're able to deliver a (laughs) top notch product at a substantially lower price. Also, I would like to say, I would like to point this out that Randy posted this publicly on YouTube more value than even products sell there out there in the market for higher. Oh, and I think you're going to see that that is our goal here is to deliver value at lower prices. Every single thing that our goal is here to deliver, not only when we launch, but months and months, months down the road is the top notch product at a substantially lower value. So when consumers come here, whether they're customers, whether the distributors are going to look and say, Hey, wait a second, these guys are doing everything they can in their power to give us value, but also give us opportunity to go earn an income. So that travel piece, I was on real quickly, as you guys can imagine, um, we literally said, go, 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 go. Last Friday night, I talked to Randy um, and we- Last Friday night, but Randy just made the decision two days ago. How does that work? How's that time frame work? It's interesting. We have put the pedal down to get everything done. And I think you guys will be very impressed in the timing in which we move. We have a very, very um, aggressive and phenomenal tech partner that will be delivering a lot of areas. But this is not something that, hey, we've been putting together for months. If we did, we would have a very professional, amazing uh, PowerPoint right now. But I also think it's important for you guys to hear. Oh, so you just threw it together. You you didn't take any time to prepare. You're just like, hey, this is good enough. We're going to see what sticks. Throw it against the wall. You know what I think they're doing? I think they're doing the exact same thing that they did with Transact Card and Finmore, where they're going to say, but this is a startup. So all these people are preconditioned to accept that this is going to be a nightmare. And there's going to be like, but this happens in all startups. You know, it's going to be clunky. The paychecks aren't going to come in. We have to just stick with it. Just believe we don't have the tech. Then why start? What is the hurry of starting this right now? What is the, why is it, why can't it wait? Why, if you're so patient and you're like, well, Thin more is going to, the cards are eventually going to come. It's going to be good. Why can't you stick with it? Why all of a sudden the race to do this two days ago to do this? Why? Yeah, because they want to make money. When I say they, I mean Randy and Nick and the other people involved with getting in on this at the beginning. Randy is not somebody that, according to him on this video that he'll talk about later, He isn't starting this company. He's just a distributor in the company, like one of the first. So it's interesting to hear him talking about this the way that he is, because you would almost think that with his language, he's a partner in this. He's part of the C-suite or something like that. He's not. He's not. So I don't know who said this earlier, but somebody said, well, Nick's the fall guy. Smart. Hear Randy's heart, hear my heart, and hear uh, the vision and what we're wanting to build. But on that track, travel piece. I was on for just a few minutes. I said, Hey, I'm going to Austin Uh, in a few weeks. My daughter has a cheer competition. They pulled it up. Um, It was a Spring Hill Marriott's compared to Expedia. And Expedia to me always has really great prices. In a three night stay, it saved over $350. I'm like, okay, maybe there's not a lot of demand. So maybe that hotel had a low, low, you know, low rate. Maybe that's why it was so less. I'm like, let's go to somewhere where there's high demand. We went and looked at New York City on New Year's Eve which that is obviously, uh, they usually try to get a premium. Uh, It was another Marriott property. Um, It was in the high 4,000s for the days that we put in there. I looked on Expedia, it was low 4,000s. And then I'm like, okay, let me look for some business codes. I have the video of him throwing a tantrum. I have the video. Do you want to watch it? Oh, yes. Do you guys mind if we like pause this? and watch that because I do think that's interesting, especially after hearing Randy's story about him losing his mind, in my opinion, uh, on that snowplow driver. I think it would be kind of interesting to watch. Okay, hang on. And it was, um... <laughs> oh, it was Charlene that found it. Thank you, Charlene, appreciate oh, you. All right, here we go. I don't know what the sound is like. We're just going to have to roll with it. Hey, 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 and hey. Here it is. That card. You know, I have that. I have had the conversation I'm about to have with you 
I've had with multiple people today. And I thought to myself, you know what? Why not have it one more time, make a little YouTube video and send it out to you all so that I can get back to the revenue producing activities. I want to comment on the events of the past handful of days as it relates to Transact Card. And there's so much confusion. And along with confusion, it is not unusual for that confusion to lead, lead naturally to fear. And when confusion leads to fear, then that leads to a cessation of constructive and productive behaviors. And sometimes even worse, it leads to destructive behaviors. And so what I want to do is provide clarity in the face of the confusion. Uh, you know how you can provide clarity? Paying people providing what you said was going to be provided. That's how you can provide clarity instead of this smearing of the chaos to, you know, hey, they're just haters. Don't listen to them. I already know that's where we're going. I can feel it. I know you can too, Julie. He's twitching his leg. He's like that annoying kid, you know, in school that would just be like with their leg, just like, ooh, and you're just like, just stop kicking the desk. You know? Yeah, he's gonna he looks burst. so mad. He's gonna, he's gonna, I bet he has a vein too that just like sticks out right before he loses his yeah. nut. <laughs> Randy, maybe take a breath, speak with your therapist before you decided to put this YouTube video up, but we're going to react to it. So, yeah. A couple of days ago, we noticed we got messages that said that we could no longer load money into our accounts. And that was, of course, problematic because those of us who've been swiping that card, we love it. I remember every, every time I pull a different card out of my pocket, I feel like Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now, he's heading up the river in Vietnam and, and he says, the horror, the horror. That's what I feel like. Um, I'm sorry. Let's maybe not compare your MLM company to people that were in Vietnam Let's maybe don't do that because that's that's definitely a fallacy. It's also very disgusting for the people that served in Vietnam. What? How did we get here? This gets better and better. I'm getting actually goosebumps of like anticipation. I'm like excited what this guy's going to say. This is going downhill fast. It's like it is. the ride. You're like, oh, no. Oh, Yeah when I swipe a card that's not transact card because I don't get Z-Bucks. And so when there's an interruption, then that uh, a lot of people are disappointed. I was disappointed in the interruption. Of course I was. And I was eager to find out what was the cause of the interruption and, and what is the solution to that interruption. And so I want to provide that information for you right now in a very, very simple way so that we all understand with clarity. It's, it's not, you know, it's not legit unless you write it on a whiteboard. <laughs> The problem is, Randy, people have been scammed in Transact and Finmore and made promises by that company that people would get paid and that they would be able to take these Z-Bucks or Finbucks. Is that what they call them? Finbucks? Fin? What do they call them? Fin, in fin, fin credits, I think. Fin credits. <laughs> Being able to use their credits some people have like thousands and thousands of credits from swiping their cards and there's not anything to spend it on so you can present this like hey this is such a great idea we're gonna have luxury items we're gonna have everyday household items the fin store or whatever it's called doesn't exist so if you're gonna make promises deliver on it and if you can't deliver on it, don't pre-launch the company. And if, if you shouldn't be, if you don't have everything ready, it, you shouldn't pre-launch the company. You shouldn't be trying to recruit people into the pre-launch. That's just common sense. We've talked about the fact that we as transact card participants are what the new face is described of banking. And in our company's basic presentation, it talks about the evolution of banking. You know, down at the bottom of, of our property, we have goats and we have bunnies and we have chickens. And there was a time in the beginning of what? commerce where the medium of exchange might have been a chicken. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Goats and bunnies and chickens. Oh my. <laughs> what are we talking about? Randy, who told you this was a good idea? Looking for a bunny or, you know, three goats for a 
donkey or whatever it was. And, and there's been ongoing evolution of the banking and the financial services world. And starting <laughs> in about 2010 came the introduction of app-based banking. And with app-based banking, that gave rise to a new industry. It's called FinTech or financial technology companies, which provides services in the financial, which provides services to companies as it manages their financial portfolio, a fintech company, which Nobody is what Solid that. is. And we saw references that Solid had severed its relationship with Transact Card. And so what exactly was Solid providing for Transact Card? So Nothing. <laughs> Nothing was Solid with Transact Card. Transact Card. Next question, Randy. We, we, we just skipped over the history of man. It was like, Mesopotamia and we would like barter with goats and chickens and bunnies and then just like went straight to fintech. <laughs> that was quite the leap. I'm still trying. Went, I got one yeah. flash there. <laughs> we went from evolution to banking and I, I Randy, <laughs> sir, are you good? And we got this drawing up there. Is that a, is that like rollerblades? I'm into it. Listen, I'm I into did. it. Yeah. We grew up with rollerblades. That's I remember. Right. Um, is a roller is what is that? Is that a donkey or a dog next to that with behind MLM? Oh. Which, by the way, you should check out that website. They have great, great, great articles. What is this? Eagles, dirty laundry. What? <laughs> what are we doing, Randy? He wins at Pictionary every time. <laughs> Listen. Did you grow up playing Pictionary? Because... I loved it. I loved it so much. And my family would, was so reluctant to play it. And I just, I just still want anybody to play with me that game. You need to have four people. I love to that game. It. That's it. We have we to got... meet in Pictionary. <laughs> uh, yes. Maybe. I don't know. Listen, technology, I, I can learn it, but it's not necessarily my thing. But how fun would it be? And if you guys are technology people and can figure out a way that maybe we could do this, what if we did like, anti MLM Pictionary. And we could have, I don't want to volunteer other creators, but we could have teams of creators and see if we could each draw. I don't know how it would work. I don't know if it would work, but um, I think that would be super fun. And uh, yeah, because Pictionary got really competitive in my household growing up. <laughs> oh, there's a Jackbox game that is a Pictionary. I didn't know. Oh, you guys would love that. Okay, so maybe we can figure that out. That would be super fun. Speaking of, uh, well, that would be super fun. But Randy's presentation here, not so fun. But your commentary, <laughs> super fun. Yeah. Solid <laughs> was providing a mechanism to cause the dashboard mechanism. and the sponsor bank. Oh, the same word that he's been plugging in his new scheme, Nilo Life, he's using the same thing with Transact Card. Didn't he say mechanism of memberships or something along those lines, which is just code for recruiting? Yep. Yeah. And the users and the application, the products and services to all come together. That's what that, it's what that company does. And one must understand that when one <laughs> contracts with Solid, it is Solid who had the relationship with the partner banks. And so when the relationship with Solid was severed, that by its definition severed the relationship with the partner bank. Now, this leads to the ultimate, the ultimate fix is what? The reason that our company needed to use Solid is because as a startup, we would not have and would not be eligible to receive our own BIN, that's a banking identification number. Because no bank would back you. You're, you're leaving part of the story out here, Randy, and it's kind of like the most important part. He's, he's going to lose his shit. Like he the does. way he's standing there, it's like he's, I want him to clear his throat too. I don't know whether he's just a phlegmy man or what, but it sounds like there's like phlegm that's always, it you sounds know, like that. stressed. <clears throat> yeah. And he's standing like that, that's super aggressive. Like he's going to lose his mind. Like he yeah. looks like he's about to scream and yell. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know if it's Val or Gus or both watching from the clown town, but uh, no, it makes no sense what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just trying to sound smart, I feel like, honestly. Yeah. Also, drink some of that water in that cup right there, Randy, because I, I think you might need it. Yeah. Clear your throat, man. Yeah.
Solid is a group. It's one of many, one of many, neither the biggest nor the smallest. I don't know that one can identify that one is the best or better or not any better than the rest. But Solid was an application. It was a company who was able to provide the suite of services at the very outset when our company was the rawest of raw startups. And we are and were, and I remain grateful that Solid was available (laughs) at that very first day. The BIN, the banking identification number, is the single most important thing that Solid would provide to us. Nobody understood the pace of growth this company would have. I don't think that Peter Rancy or the Richard Smith, in their most wildly optimistic thoughts, believed 120 days ago that there would be more than 30,000 transact cards in people's hands today. Solid. Except you're missing out. You're, You're changing the story. Uh, do they actually have a transact card in their hand? No, they don't. So that's not truthful, Randy. They don't actually have it in their hand. Nobody does. (laughs) Has a been a banking identification number. Transact card is one of many companies that solid serves and the solid bin number is used by multiple companies, not by one. You see, the ultimate solution is what the ultimate solution is for our company to become eligible for, to apply for, and to receive its own banking identification number. The good news is that our company accomplished in a matter of weeks what most people, I believe, thought would take years, not weeks. We now are eligible for and have applied for a BIN number. And sometime in early 2024, maybe in the first half of 2024, we will no longer be dependent upon anyone else for a banking identification number. Now- How'd that turn out for you there, Randy? <laughs> condescension the bin number he's written it in such tiny whiny tiny weeny teeny weeny little script you can't tell anything but he's got like all the rays of the sun shooting out from bin and speaking the bin number the business identification like he's just like oh yeah this is gonna happen how did that turn out for you it's not even the company doesn't even exist now it's finmore now you're doing nilo life Mm-hmm. This is wonderful that this is on the record. I love that we're reacting to this. Charlene, thanks for sending this because we were just talking about it. And I'm like, I would, both of us said we would love to see that video. And here we are. We can talk about the various issues that caused the relationship between Transact Card and Solid to have gone sour. The truth is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't but it really does. matter. The question is, is there an adequate, reliable replacement? Are there multiple adequate, reliable replacements? What is the timeline? Oh my God, Carrie. First of all, thank you for being so brave to share this comment. Incredible. We are so glad. I'm going to speak for Julie and I. We're so glad that you got away from this company. Um, Thank you for sharing this. This is a really, really, really big deal. And we appreciate it so much because by you sharing this, other people that are having some of the same thoughts about, hey, this doesn't make sense with Finmore and then Nilo Life, it's helping other people. So thank you for sharing this. We appreciate you so much and you are incredibly brave for sharing that. Affect that replacement. How big is this disruption? And is, is it something that we should be um, overly concerned about? Well, whenever there's a bump in the road, by the way, why do you suppose the company had an extended pre-launch period in advance of the formal launching? Isn't it like- to recruit more people into the scam? I don't know, Randy. Why? I'm sure you're going to tell us, right? Oh. Logical. And can't we see with clarity that the reason for a pre-launch period is to work through the very kinds of challenges that we now experience? As it turns out, we simply delivered a whole lot more accounts to solid than that shared bin number could handle. And the result is that we wound up not only disrupting our business, it wasn't just that our business was being disrupted by this massive number of new accounts. It is that other clients of solid would be negatively impacted by the overwhelming of the system caused. (laughs) So what you're saying is if solid worked with transact card, it would make them look less legitimate is that what i'm hearing <laughs> because they'd be back in a scam <laughs> is that what you're hearing too 
I don't know what I'm hearing. He's like, it's so, it means nothing at all. I'm just mystified at how he keeps stringing words together. And I, I know when he's like the sheer number of, of people and I, and I'm thinking because I might've read an article on this and I could be wrong. That's why I'm not like hearing the same thing you are, is that I think it, they were trying to say that solid couldn't handle the like amazing okay. influx of people that transact card it wasn't sufficient enough like transact card like just was so amazing i think but i'm not i don't know yeah i could be i could be totally missed because i i just tuned out he's not making any sense <laughs> i just want the him fact, to like, talk about the little rollerblade thing i'm like i know me too to that, this is know? a shorter video <laughs> it's only like 15 minutes or something like that okay. um this would make a, a great thumbnail i'm gonna screen oh. grab this for the future in case I need it because I can think of all kinds of things <laughs> that I can put in his hands there <laughs> oh, and it may be beneficial yes. down the road yes <laughs> so let me say that okay by the stunning growth of this company and that's the primary reason for the challenge now would I have preferred that that didn't happen sure but oh, I would also course. have preferred that we weren't having 30% of people who were trying to fund their accounts were getting error messages. I would also prefer that I didn't have to get up at 2 a.m. to fund my account because the only time I could get into the bank. And so now you see, the first thing that I did was ascertain <laughs> that there were multiple other, not just acceptable, but really, really good alternatives. All of these are FinTech companies who provide the same services that Solid does. And while it's not my role to describe the company uh, negotiations and so on. But yet here you are on a Facebook Live, giving all the details like you're a part of the C-suite of the company. You're presenting yourself like you're the VP of the company, explaining what's going on. Is he part of the C-suite and Transact or Finmore or no? Is he a I don't think so. I think he's just a distributor. And it's funny how he is. he shows this long list and none of them. <laughs> None of them bit. <laughs> <laughs> they all said it's a no for us. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So. Yeah, like no, no, hard pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I can tell you that one of these has already been identified as the replacement. That contracts either have been signed or will be signed. When last I heard, an agreement in principle had been reached. The final document's not yet signed, but it's with one of the oh. companies who does the same thing. And of course, we believe they'll do the same thing in a better fashion. And this company is prepared to have us not be utilizing a shared bin, which will be overwhelmed immediately by the continued acceleration of our company. And so very much a normal, natural part of pre-launch development, this particular bump in the road caused by excessive growth, growth dramatically beyond that which anybody could anticipate going in. Are there other entities who can provide these same services and then did you know this carrie says the store is supposed to be open this friday Finmore. it will be very interesting to see if it actually does open up on friday yeah, yeah. i'll be shocked in fact provide them in a superior fashion given the nature of our scope and scale the answer is yes and so i think of this a little bit like this um, part of my life experience is that um, I was married to a woman who I'm sure is a fine woman uh, for 17 years, but it was the exact wrong combination. I mean, you, you married her. You were married to her for 17 years. What do you mean? I'm sure she's a fine woman. First of all, I'm just, this is just my opinion, but if she put up with you for 17 years, I'd say she's a damn good woman. That's just my opinion though. Also, if you used to be married to him and you want to reach out to Julie and I, or Julie or myself, uh, we have questions. I have questions. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. That really, that's the only question. Yeah. Seriously. Are you Congratulations okay? Congratulations on getting out. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. And I Jesus sometimes sake. tell people as I smile, I say, you know, I know I'm going straight to heaven. I happen to be a Catholic. I know I'm going straight to heaven because I did 17 years of purgatory on earth trying to survive. Oh my God. What a dick! <laughs> wow! Cue Taylor Swift's It's Me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Wow. 
I can't believe he said that. Now, keep in mind, like, let's just put all of this together here really quickly. Here he is presenting himself in a suit like this is a professional meeting, like he is part of the C-suite of the company. He's talking about the ins and outs of the BIN numbers and this and that. And here he is shaming his (laughs) ex-wife. The professionalism of all of that. Unbelievable. (laughs) I can't even believe this is delivering so much entertaining. <laughs> I can't believe that he said that 17 years in purgatory. How can he be thinking that this is normal behavior? I mean, this if it was so- purgatory for him, imagine what it was like for his wife. Oh, no kidding. Seriously. Is she okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I just saw a comment. Hold on. Um, Are the straights okay? Yeah. (laughs) He is not okay. He's not well, in my opinion. By the marriage that just wasn't right. It wasn't right for me. It wasn't right for her. I'm not blaming her for the failure of the marriage. It wasn't right. It wasn't the right mix. The truth is that I'm so committed to the idea that marriages should work and they should last that I never would have left. That is the truth. I would never have left. I would have been the long suffering one and done my best. One day, um, while I, at the moment, it did not make me feel good. One day it uh, took my breath away. Um, She just left and she didn't come back. Well, one day, at the perfect sound. <laughs> Are you a Monty Python fan? <laughs> yeah, okay. If you guys are Monty Python fans, you'll get it. But uh, glad she ran away, but she just left one day. Good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> the partner that wasn't the right partner just left. That's what happened one day. It just left, and uh, while I wasn't, I wasn't hoping that that would happen in my marriage. In fact, I was praying that the opposite would happen, that things would work out, that it would be okay. And the day that she left, I didn't think that would make things better. Wow, I could only see to hear. I needed to see to hear. Um, today, I am so grateful that that happened because I would never have met Samantha had that not occurred. We would never have become a couple had that not occurred. I would never have experienced the joy of the relationship that I have today as oh, compared God. to the one that just wasn't right. Now, notice I didn't say there was something wrong with the woman. There wasn't. There was- Except you did. Except <laughs> that's absolutely what you said just a couple minutes ago. <laughs> you said you spent 17 years in purgatory. <laughs> Imagine what? how she felt. wasn't the right one for me. I'm not saying that this is a wrong company. It wasn't the right company for Transact Card. Here are many others. And I leave it up to the company to ascertain that the one that they chose is the right one for our company. And I also remind you all that the real target is what? The real target is when we have our own banking identification number, we will be using one of these entities' banking identification numbers as we go through our process. But sometime in the first half of next year, we'll have our own banking identification number. And then one of the primary, one of the primary mm, vulnerabilities, a primary vulnerability, I wouldn't say weakness, but a vulnerability of our company is permanently eradicated. We're no longer dependent upon somebody else's bin. We then become the actual issuer of the card ourselves without having to have this middle entity standing between us and that issuer. Um, That is a huge, huge, huge plus. And so it's very much like that day that my wife left, it took my breath away. I could hardly breathe for a few moments. I have to tell you that when I heard that the banking relationship had for now been severed, it took my breath away. It didn't make me happy at that second. I never- for a few moments 17 years of purgatory she left i'm good now what <laughs> randy i can't believe people join this guy i can't I believe can't. people think this is a great presentation bravo to you randy for you know facing this head on and uh you know addressing the haters and the naysayers hey randy does transact aka finmore do they have their own bin number no (laughs) no they don't does anybody have a card no no they don't but uh yeah okay 
Oh, yeah. Somebody is talking to him off camera. I'm not sure who it is. It's probably Samantha. Samantha, are you okay? Blink <laughs> twice if you need help. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. You got a car wreck? What are you talking about car wreck? I didn't say anything about car wrecks. I thought you said that when my wife got into a car wreck. Oh, no. My wife's in here and she's talking about car wrecks, but I never got one. <laughs> at any rate, <laughs> at any rate, um, when, when that occurred, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't see in it the good. Um, Back then, <laughs> talking about the relationship breakup. Is... Um, but now today, <laughs> the first question somebody asks is about a car wreck that they thought they heard him say. Like that's the first time somebody asks for clarification. What is going on? <laughs> did he say car? Did he say car wreck? Yeah, somebody asked him about a car wreck. He said, "I never said anything about a car wreck." I, but he's like, "I never said anything about a car wreck." But I thought you said something about a car wreck, but. How odd is like that's the first question that somebody thinks to ask. This presentation that, some, that is they a need car clarity wreck. on. The clown town says this presentation is a car wreck. Also, thank you so much for this. I appreciate you. Is this marriage counseling or MLM recruitment? <laughs> no, ma'am. This is a train wreck, and that's why he drew a train. Maybe that's a train and not a rollerblade in the top right. It could be. It kind of looks like a train. I thought it was a choo-choo train when I first saw it. <laughs> Randy's a little train crap. that could. He's like, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I can. I can do it. I did it in Monavi. I did it in Canaway. I can do this in Transact Card. I can do this in Finmore. I can do this in Nilo. <laughs> I'm manifesting us having our own bin number, our own bin, our own BIN, whatever it's called. I'm manifesting <laughs> that our company makes the right decisions so that we can bring this breakthrough banking to the world. How'd that work out, Randy? No? Okay, now you're gonna do travel and trading and educational platforms? Okay. <laughs> hey. When I see this breakup, when I see this breakup, I can already see that that was the right thing. That was what needed to happen. That was the what? thing that needed to occur. And so I'm grateful today, and I'm grateful that our company was able to pivot immediately, quickly, aggressively, to pivot. form the relationships and to move forward. And so this is, in fact, a hiccup. It is a bump in the road, not a big one. And it is a bump in the road that um, we shouldn't be surprised if we have another bump or two in the road between now and November 12th. I can't forecast in advance what it will be, but whatever it is, I know this company will overcome it. They will scale that hill and everything will be just fine. Just now, fine. There was another topic I want to discuss this morning. Oh God, we're getting into it. Everybody oh, brace yes. yourselves. Everybody brace yourselves. Cause I, just a second ago, he was staring at that area of the whiteboard and I was like, oh, he's stewing. Yeah. Also behind MLM, incredible, incredible website. Y'all should check it out this evening and that is this there is a website out there called behind mlm yeah and behind mlm has decided that we highly suggest highly yeah. suggest in fact Woo! i'm going to put the behind mlm article in the video description after just so you guys can go and support and get information it is very well done very well researched in my opinion the thing they should do is write all kinds of negative things about transact card negative and, huh? um, the first thing i'd like you all to do is contemplate and consider for a moment the source of the information uh, this is the National Enquirer of Direct Selling News. And, um, you know, we don't even... No, that would be the DSA, Randy, actually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? Or uh, Business for Home. I would consider that the National Enquirer of Multilevel Marketing Companies. His also, thumb is just blah, 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 like, oh boy, this Seriously. Guy's... Also, I think what he's trying to say is pay attention to the underlying motivation. He's mad. Good for you, Randy. <laughs> then we exit the, the realm of direct selling quite soon, but now we still live in that space. And who is behind MLM? Well, it is the, as I indicated, it is the National Enquirer. You know, the Eagles wrote a song or performed, I don't know if they wrote it or who did it, but a song called uh, Dirty Laundry. I know what it said. Leave the Eagles out of it, okay? Leave them out of it. They don't want to be associated with Transact, Finmore, any of it. No. Done. Get the widow on the set. Give us dirty laundry. You know, there's a bubble head of bleach, bleach blonde. Is the head dead yet? And on we go, saying we just want to find the bad news. We want to find and dwell in the bad news. And that song was, of course, a parody. It was a caricature of American society, where there is so much. In wait, 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 wait. That wasn't even the Eagles. It was Don. <laughs> 
Oh, oh God. God. Oh, yikes. <laughs> What the hell is going on? Now? He did. I think this that's. Is, this is premeditated. Perfect, oh my! Sorry. Go ahead. This is premeditated whiteboard writing. Like he had this up before he started the presentation. This wasn't like <laughs> he planned this. Aaron. He planned talking about this. He oh thought this was God. a good thing. And this is why you probably should not necessarily trust anything that he says and knowing is half the battle <laughs> i had to <laughs> uh also you can't make this stuff up yeah. i feel like we say that all the time yeah. <laughs> the jokes write themselves and yet here we are oh my god don henley he's so smart <laughs> i mean that's a quick google search <laughs> Probably the same Google search where he looked for the behind MLM articles. Very simple to do. <laughs> Interest and intrigue. I'm focusing on the bad news and finding the crisis and catastrophizing it and blowing it up. And I'll get the widow on the set. Give us dirty laundry. I promise you behind MLM is all about dirty laundry. And it's about publishing whichever dirty laundry somebody will pay them the most to publish. This is not something I think. It is something that I know. Um, um, I don't think that's accurate. Also, does the dirty laundry belong to... It's Oz, Oz that writes that article, right? Anyways, I think it's Oz. Um, does the dirty laundry belong to Oz at Behind MLM or does the dirty laundry belong to Transact? Because I don't think the, the dirty laundry belongs to Behind MLM. I think they're reporting on the dirty laundry, if you will. If I could so boldly use your phrase, you know. Uh, the dirty laundry belongs to Transact. Now, Finmore. So if you're mad about that, maybe put that dirty laundry in the washer and fix it. You know, just rub a dub dub in the washer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lived in the industry for many, many, many years, and that is truly a trash rag. And to the editors and publishers of behind, behind MLM, there you have my opinion. Well thought out and considered after all these many, many, many. Look at his leg swinging. <laughs> this is his, like, he's smacking it down. Like, that's it. He's like, he thought about this. Like, he probably woke up at 2 a.m. and he's like, I know what I'm going to do the video on. I knew it. I've got the idea. It's going to be the Eagles, the dirty laundry. This is going to flow seamlessly into my bin presentation. I'm going to doodle <laughs> on the corner. <laughs> and I'm going to deliver this. I'm going to let everybody know, oh, that this is the National Enquirer. This is like the dirty rag. <laughs> Don't listen to them who has no interest in trying to recruit you. Only listen to me. I'm trying to make money off of you. Charlene it's... says, we're back to Randy not liking accountability. Seems like a pattern with him. Indeed. Indeed. To make his whiteboard, it just shows how, how easily affected they are. <laughs> by criticism they have they put up such a front of being like cosplaying as businessmen business people and it's like he had to doodle on his whiteboard like i still don't know what that thing is i think it might i thought it was a caterpillar but i think you're right i think it might be like a dog or a cat <laughs> i don't know what that is <laughs> i'm I don't know what's going on. I don't get the lyrics. He was so garbled. I don't know. The bobble-headed blonde. <laughs> oh, my God. Savannah, please cover him. Clown Town, any other creators, please cover this guy and what he's doing because it's unbelievable. <laughs> Years in the industry. Uh, and so you see, dogs dogs don't chase parked cars. That's a car? Um, turns out <laughs> car is not a parked Hold car. On. Wait. I can't. I can't. <laughs> what the that is a Dog. car sir i thought that was a rollerblade <laughs> dogs don't chase parked cars that's what, it, that's what this is all leading to because transact card is moving so quickly the dog oh is running God. after because the dog is oh my God, that's it <laughs> that just made me snort <laughs> wait <laughs> <laughs> who's the car and who's the dog? I think, well, I see a little TZ or TC. I think the, 
I think the car is oh, transact, transact car. car. And the dog is so stupid. Like the dog is, you know, the dog just runs after a car that, you know, and the dog doesn't run after a parked car, you see. You see, I went uphill both ways back in my day and there was a snowplow driver, you see, or fell who was, off. Who was plowing the middle of the road. How dare them? And I had a wife of 17 years and I'm a Catholic. God bless her, but I was in purgatory. Purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most unhinged live stream <laughs> thanks to randy here oh my god oh, randy, that actually randy. made me snort <laughs> <laughs> oh my god julie and i whenever we are sending voice messages back and forth which is hilarious because out of this last week we now are like we have each other's phone number like that's the kind of friends we are and we'll send voice messages and her voice messages are just like what she is here and she'll start <laughs> laughing and it is the best thing ever it brings me so much joy <laughs> oh god all right <laughs> play the video now i'm gonna get it together all right you know, behind MLM, they could find so many admirable things to say about our company. They could talk about the most remarkable vertical thrust straight up that the industry has seen in the last three decades. They could talk about the joy that is being created. They could talk about the hope. They could talk about the renewed energy. They could talk about the attraction of so many people to the industry for the first time who have been saying no. There are so many unbelievably positive things to say about this company but what has behind mlm chosen to do well think for a moment think for a moment about this idea of competitors are there some companies who may not find joy in our success are there leaders who are joining us from other companies might some of those other companies who are advertisers and behind mlm have a little bit to do with what's going on right now in that particular what? publication wait 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 randy you're trying to say that the competitors first of all what competitors that's not a compliment by the way randy what competitors are trying to compete at this time with transact card that's not delivering who, who are you talking about these are the the haters the the competitors that don't want us to win that are behind b behind the behind mlm website i don't think so randy and i think that if you would have done research which i know is probably not your strong point considering you said the eagles saying dirty laundry and we learned in the live <laughs> chat that it was actually don henley that makes me wonder about your researching <clears throat> skills aka google and I don't think they're very good. I think you're just kind of going with it and saying whatever to try and deflect people from doing their own research. And if I know we've been laughing a lot, my, my jaw hurts from laughing. Um, I know that we have been ra laughing a lot, but seriously, if you are following this guy and you are watching this kind of tactic, what he's doing is he's trying to create a smoke screen to prevent you from critically thinking, to prevent you from researching. I'm pretty sure if you were to Google this guy, look at the cat, you would find so much information on him. <sighs> Please critically think, do your research, do not use him as a source. And if you are in these companies and something doesn't seem right, valid, absolutely valid. And humor is a good way through this. We have to laugh. <clears throat> Like he, him going on. So Randy, I've got some advice for you. And I know that Write you're a down, Randy. Trainer, and I, I would take notes because you're about to learn something and I'm going to call it postured around your network marketing business. So posture is the belief in what you have, regardless of external acceptance or approval, Randy. So if someone were to just come up to you and say, well, transact card is a pyramid scheme. Well, you shouldn't have to doodle on your whiteboard and make most of your presentation focusing your energy on that. If you're truly believing in what you had, regardless of anybody telling you that this is a pyramid scheme or somebody writing an article or competitors wanting to take down your bin number, you would just move on with the presentation because what you're doing is you're attracting scarcity into your life by focusing on what you don't want. And you've effectively modeled this behavior to all these people in this presentation. And that, Randy, is why Transact Card failed. It's because of you. You manifested it. All because you weren't postured around your network marketing business. 
that'll be another $55. <laughs> you know what I have to say to that? Randy, this is for you. Write that down, write that down. Write it down. <laughs> SpongeBob said, write it down. Choice of, of, <laughs> of, of dialogue. Is it possible, do you suppose, that competitors are in some way responsible for what's going on? I will tell you, it's not only possible, it's in my mind altogether likely. In fact, it's virtually a certainty. And so what? we have a dog out there and uh, they're not chasing our car. They would not be chasing our car were it not the most ballistic straight up shot in the last three decades. And um, they're going to find very shortly that all of their efforts to slow the growth result only in them looking uh, less intelligent because the truth will shortly be borne out. New partners already in place, already been assigned. The truth has definitely come out, Randy. And that's why Transact rebranded to Finmore, right? That's why, because the truth came out and you guys had to do something. So of course we're gonna rebrand and try and hide for longer while you're recruiting people and collecting their money and delivering promises that you know will never happen. But go off in the video that we featured at the beginning of this, where he's talking about how, listen, I had to do the right thing. I made this decision in the last few days, things were not right. I found out that nobody was gonna get their card until the fall. You guys have to get paid. So I'm the leader. I'm the savior in this situation. I'm going to help you get into this new company so that you can make money now. It's important to me that you make money now. The irony of that is this guy is in, he's a serial MLMer. So he knows that these people are not going to make money because over 99% of people lose money, according to the FTC, in a multi level marketing company. So he's saying all these things. And just like Julie mentioned earlier, He's saying these things, they sound good, but he actually does the opposite. And it's not just him. It's Nick Sorensen. It's uh, Eric Allen. And who's the other guy? Larry. Larry Lane. All of them are saying what sounds good, you know, playing the feel good music, you know, the John Bon Jovi and all of that stuff on, you know, trying to get their people hyped. And it's all just one big smoke screen to keep people in longer so that they're paying the monthly fees and all of that stuff, hoping that one day that will change. It's not gonna change. Get out of this company. And if you are thinking about joining Nilo Life, please don't. Think about this. Did you make any money in Finmore? Did you make any money in Transact? Have you been able to, to use those credits on luxury items that they promised you would be able to use them on? Have you been able to use them at all on a store? How much money have you lost in all of this? Do a profit and loss statement. Don't go to this guy. He's gonna tell you, hey, you know, hang tight. We're moving to this new company because he's gonna get paid. He's at the top of the pyramid. Please think about this stuff. If you are involved in any of these companies and get out, your feelings are valid. It, it's not an easy thing, but this is, this is not okay. This is aggression. And he is now, you know, this, he conditions people to be receptive to this kind of behavior. This isn't, this is now intimidation. So he's being yeah. very aggressive in this. And what he's teaching you, like all the people watching this, is that he will go after you as strong as he's going after behind MLM. I bet you there were people like rumblings within Transact Card at this time that were saying something because somebody had sent me a message um, that, uh, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but whatever um, live or whatever Zoom that Randy was recently on, somebody asked, is this a fake? And he banned them like he just kicked them out of That's this call. Crazy. So this makes sense because uh, this it's he's acting like really tough, but he's also nobody asks questions because, you know, you're equated to a dog, a bobble headed blonde, like mm -hmm. the most demeaning, contemptuous language like his, uh, you know, his he's definitely have women issues. He's swinging his leg. He's twitching. He's doing that uncomfortable laughing. And everybody in there is going to be taking this back to their downlines and they're going to be treating their people like that, too. So if you're watching this and you're going to be joining Nilo Life, you've already seen it. This is who this individual is. This is how he approaches. This isn't how you do business. This is somebody who's afraid, who has a very fragile ego. And the only way he can recruit people into a scam is through this nonsense. Speaking quickly, garbled up, trying to confuse you, and then being a very aggressive when somebody 
publishes an article exposing the truth. That's mm -hmm. a scam. This isn't legitimate business. I can't wait for him to find out about this video. I can't wait either. Go ahead and do another Facebook Live, Randy, because I want to be Julie on your whiteboard. I will cover so it. Oh my God, I want to be on your whiteboard so bad. <laughs> Aaron B's, Julie Anderson. Write it down. <laughs> Write it down, Randy. Um, also, this is for you, Randy. Stop it. Get some help. Thank you, Michael Jordan. I appreciate you. <laughs> Cards will shortly be issued. Transact card will continue. It's inevitable movement. It's inevitable transition from a great idea to the most remarkable launch in recent memory to what will become one of the great, great, great success stories of our time. That is the that did not age well at all. Love that for you, Randy. The truth. And by the way, this is a moment where one earns or loses market share. And I promise you, I want all of you to succeed. It's not my intent to compete with anyone. I want your market share to get bigger. Those who are frozen in fear by the dog chasing the car that is not parked, those frozen in fear by all of the dirty laundry that is being thrown around, they will see. The dirty laundry that belongs to Transact, aka Finmore. You're, you're, you're forgetting that part. It's not dirty laundry that's, that's owned by behind MLM. Those are skeletons in Transact's closet, if you will. It's, yeah, it's Randy Schroeder's. He wet his pants when Behind MLM wrote the article and he took it off. He threw it in there and he doesn't know how to do the laundry. He never did it for 17 years. And that's why his first <laughs> life left. Poor Samantha is like, I got to do his dirty laundry all the time. He never puts his socks in the hamper. <laughs> oh my God. I want to know if Samantha's blonde out of sheer curiosity from the things that he has said. I'm not saying go is. and find her. That's not, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. hearing his, I feel like it's misogyny, misogyny, excuse me. That's what it feels like to me. So I'm just wondering, is his wife blonde? Because yeah. I wonder if she is, I wonder how she feels about some of these things that he's saying. I don't know. Again, that's not me saying go and search her out or anything like that. Just food for thought, I guess. Also, right, 1010, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. I always tell people who want to get a friend or family out to support them by buying them an expense versus income journal. They see loss faster. Oh, that's a great idea. An expense versus an income journal. Thank you so much. That's a great idea. Randy, if you need us to send you one, let me know. I'll send, I'll, I'll Amazon ship you one. The Transact card continue to move forward and they will find themselves being a little bit less in terms of their overall participation in the company. Those She's who seize that. upon this moment of time as a moment of the most profound opportunity will look back at this short moment and say, thank God for behind MLM because that gave me a moment to play a little bit of catch up because I'm just learning about the company today and I need to catch up to those who've been there for a few what? months. Folks, um, write it down so you heard it here first. This company will continue its meteoric rise. These problems will fail. He just said this, remember, write this down, uh, March, whatever, at 627 um, p.m., 10,000 people are going to be enrolled within the first week, and now he's making this other prophecy. This must be part of his spiel, too. Write this down. Oh, let's write it down. <laughs> and that's, it's very easy to fact check. None of this happened. <laughs> none, none of it. Whoops. Fade <laughs> into the past. This will become simply an archive moment. This is your moment to seize upon. I, I think you got that backwards, my guy. I don't think behind MLM archived. I think transact archived. I think you got that backwards. Whoopsies. That's embarrassing. <laughs> on the opportunity created by transact card to seize upon this specific moment of opportunity created by negative press, created by the oh, yeah. elimination of <laughs> yep. a partnership which was not meant to be. Shortly, the partnership that is designed to be will be made public, and we will go forward. Talk to you all soon. Oh, Randy. <laughs> Randy. You think that the negative press actually helped transact? Haterade. Oh, this is Haterade. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. Haterade was his Gatorade. <laughs> That's what we were taught in rank makers. It's like, I don't think it was. It did. Oh it was like, God. he did say one thing correct when it's like, thank God for behind MLM. Absolutely. <laughs> Keep doing what you do. I love that website. There's so much information. If you've never checked that website out, highly suggest it. There's so much research and information at your fingertips. It is incredible. 
And uh, yeah, so that was the end of that video. But I feel like this was a great, I've never talked about Randy Schroeder on my page. <laughs> I have to say his name like that too. I've never talked about him, not on my page, on my channel. So I, I think this was a good kind of intro to him on my channel. I know you've talked about him and, and his tactics and stuff like that. So, you know, Randy, go ahead and say our name so that we can do another video and talk about how you're scheming people out of thousands and thousands of dollars, in our opinion. Oh, anyways, that was a wild ride. I did not I have enough coffee for that. No, I know that was, he's intense. Like, you know, it's easy to look at these people now outside of this and see through their machinations, you know, but when you're in this, this is really like when you're in a multi-level marketing company and you look at Randy, um, it's, it can be really compelling. Even if you're not there in the room, if you're just watching it on video, it can be like, this makes so much sense. And you want to believe in your company, whatever you yeah. bought into, and you really do love the community. You think that you've made friendships. Yeah. And the, the thought of losing those friendships and the thought of losing that community when you probably have alienated family and friends that would have been honest with you is really scary because it's who else is left. And then you're, you're programmed in an MLM to only listen to the people that are in that community. And so when you start to question it, you know that part of the uh, consequences of you questioning and moving on, whether that's to another MLM company, please don't do that. But I know that it happens. Uh, or getting out of MLM altogether, you're going to be alienated. And these these relationships and this personal development with that's associated with a comp plan, all of that goes away. And it's really scary to unravel that. It's really scary to think, well, what if I don't have all of this stuff that takes up my time? What if I don't get on the Zooms? What if I'm not constantly working and not making any money? You know, and that's that's very it's confusing and i know that when julie was working her way out i'll never forget when i saw her TikTok of her holding up monet products i was like i love her no we must save her and i remember we had a conversation about it when you i think it was after you got out um and watching you unravel that like we talked about at the beginning and you said and it was so kind that you said this about holding space and i think that the anti-MLM movement is really good at holding space for people, uh, whether they're quietly watching, whether they're commenting, whether they said, you know, in the comments or in, in any kind of content that they're watching, you know, um, I just I just left my company and they're celebrated and they're welcomed. And, you know, if you're in an MLM company, and I know Julie feels the same way, and you're starting to wonder, you're starting to wake up. I know that's a, a term that Julie uses a lot and starting to question, you, you're, you can you're welcome to join us here you know you're welcome to watch the videos you're welcome in the comments uh yeah you're welcome here you know to ask those questions whether you want to do it publicly or mm -hmm. privately you can message julie or myself or any other content creator <clears throat> that you feel comfortable with or supporter of the mlm or anti-mlm movement you know so i don't know if you have anything <clears throat> yeah. else you want to add i i just i want to um commend any multi-level marketing rep participant that is maybe just lurking and watching lurking is such a gross word but you know what I mean like yeah. you know if you're watching it and you don't want to and you might be feeling like oh my goodness why am I watching this um and what Aaron had described about the fear of stopping doing a lot of activity the fear isn't a good thing that the fear is being used to control you the fear of stopping the fear of stopping to use your product the fear of taking a day off you know how they tell you if you take one day off you're going to be six months behind or three it's always exaggerated and just yeah. the fact that you have that fear that fear is controlling that fear is baked in to your multi-level marketing company no matter how good you think this culture is and the friends are and there's a reason that you're watching this video there's a reason that you're still here. So I want to say thank you so much for listening as well as you can, as much as you can. I know for me, it took me quite some time and a lot of exposure to different content creators for me to understand and, and begin to deprogram. And like Aaron said, you're welcome here. And I'm proud of you. Yeah, we're proud of you. And also, we stand therapy on this 
absolutely platform on our platform excuse me uh we stand therapy and and unfortunately i think that's a really difficult i don't want to specialty do i is that how i want to describe that finding somebody that is familiar with high control groups is is a question that needs to be asked yeah if you're looking for a therapist yeah i would say uh, suggest um if you like it's like meditation. Like it's not great for everybody, but therapy is like, if you're, your mind, like, I like how Marco says this, your mind has been professionally tampered with that just mm. to me really explains it really well. And yeah. you need to deprogram. You do need help. So if you could find a therapist, unless there's something that it's like, you just, you just can't find out if they support multi-level marketing, because the last thing you need to do is find someone who's going to try to recruit you into new skin. Or think, well, it's not really that bad. They're going to be um, downplaying, trivializing your experience just because their lack of awareness. They might not, they don't need to be an expert on multi-level marketing, know where it's come from, but to find out if they support it or not, and then ask if they have any experience with cults. Um, abusive relationships are similar. And that is one thing I regret not getting into therapy right away. I should have done that. And when I realized four months out that I couldn't handle, like, figuring this out on my own, which we do in multi-level marketing. Don't ask questions. Yes. Don't ask your upline. Just get to work. I should have done that sooner. And I approached it similarly to what I did before I got into this whole disaster of multi-level marketing, which was an athletic background. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to actually invest in myself and get a therapist, get a, see a psychologist and work my way through it. And I'm also going to apply what I learned in multi-level marketing, which was to work. I'm going to get strong enough so I can speak out speak with my whole chest <laughs> so to speak. here you are you can do that too so invest yeah. in yourself the right way all that money you're going to save you can actually get a therapist <laughs> and yeah and, um, it's true though a, yeah and don't be afraid if the if your first therapist or whatever it doesn't work out you'll know it in and it's hard to start listening to your instincts because you're going to be um there's most likely you might second guess yourself and think, well, I don't, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe they are really good. No, you listen to your instincts and it takes some time to retrain ourselves, to actually trust ourselves, trust our own opinions. And you find a therapist that works for you and you, mm -hmm. you got this. <laughs> and to trust your own opinions over the opinions of your upline. Cause that's a big deal. Also this comment right here, Rosie, yes. I'm training to be a psychotherapist and my goal is to focus on anti-MLM. That is incredible and is definitely necessary so that's amazing let us know when that changes and and we can definitely um put the word out i guess is the best way i want to say that so that's awesome we appreciate that so much all right everybody i think i think we're good here i'm gonna make some dinner i'm sure you've got some stuff going on please if you would you guys make sure that you um have liked or if you're Randy and you want to thumbs down our video, don't care. Uh, you know, thumbs up our video. <laughs> Make sure that you're subscribed. Thank you for everybody being here. And I really love seeing all the comments, all the supportive comments of people. Hey, you know, get out. We're, we're, we're not as mean as your upline wants you to think that we are. We're actually not at all. We're very understanding. And especially like Julie and I have been there where you're at. I mean, we've, we've worked our way through it and there's things that come up you know, still to this day that we work through. Um, and so, you know, yeah, you're welcome here. So thank you for being here. Again, make sure you go subscribe to both channels and we will see you on the next video. Randy, get to work. We need another video from you, okay? And uh, other content creators, you know what to do. If you want, it's your channel, you know, but it would be cool. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Bye, everybody.